From the studios of the Richmond Register, it's this week's edition of the Richmond Register Sports Show. Every Thursday night at 9 o'clock, Richmond Register Sports Editor Nathan Hutchinson and Richmond Register Sports Writer Ricky Barker will talk about this week in Madison County Sports. Welcome to the show. The Richmond Register Sports Show is brought to you by Nuevo Vallarta, a neighborhood restaurant with indoor and patio seating, a family-friendly environment, and quality, authentic Mexican food at reasonable prices. Nuevo Vallarta. Welcome to this week's edition of the Richmond Register Sports Show. I am Richmond Register Sports Editor Nathan Hutchinson, and with me, Ricky Barker, Richmond Register Sports Writer. Hello, welcome back for another week. Yeah, <laughs> busy week. I know, it's a lot of fun. Yeah, definitely. Lots of basketball going on, and the big story of the week, obviously, is uh, is the our guest we have on here in a minute, the Berea Lady Pirates. They uh, they won the second straight 11th Regional A, uh, a Classic Championship and made their trip back over to McBrayer Arena for the second straight year, and uh, unfortunately lost in the first round of the, of the All-A State Tournament. But it doesn't take away from the accomplishment of, of getting over there, and uh, it's, it was an incredible run for those kids. They had to win three games last week uh, up in Lexington to get, uh, get back there for a second straight year. So... Uh, very happy to have them here. Coach Step is here. He's brought a couple of players with him, with him. So we will have them along here in a minute to talk about the journey and uh, uh, obviously the next the next step is the obviously heading toward the district tournament. So mm -hmm. lots for them still to play for. So that was kind of the big story of the week. But we have all kinds of other hoop action <laughs> across <laughs> across the, the college and high school level. And uh, it was a big weekend last week for EKU basketball. The the, the annual tough trip to Nashville. Uh, never, never easy to make that swing between Belmont and uh, Tennessee State, and uh, no, <laughs> and uh, both teams lost to Belmont on Thursday, but both teams did come back on Saturday and pick up a win, and uh, very significant wins on Saturday for both those teams. Uh, right. Much, much needed. But uh, the men, in particular, they were, they had not won a, a, a conference road game and well, they didn't won a road game period mm -hmm. all year, and hadn't won a road game since like last February. So. Right. Uh, they were 0-7 on the road, so they really needed a, a big one, and it was Jamar Brown who came through. Yeah, he did. Yeah, he really um, was fought and battled for him, um, and they they beat uh, Tennessee State 92 to 88. A lot of that was for Jamaro. Uh, Hobbs uh, had to step back out again in the first half, and Jamaro kind of took over and ended the game with 37 points. Uh, it was clutch at the free throw line. Had 18 of 19 free throws, six rebounds, four assists. So he was rocking it. Yeah, last year when they lost to Tennessee State down there, he actually had a chance to to hit the game-winning shot and didn't uh, didn't come up with come up with it. So this time around, he wanted another shot at him. Right. Yeah. He actually uh, he turned it over last year, and and Nick Mayo was forced to make a kind of a last-minute shot, and they mm. missed it. Um, and he turned it over again. <laughs> <laughs> He's like almost in the same exact spot, but this time he was able to like collect himself, and they were able to. He was able to get those free throws at the end for him to to keep him ahead. So good yeah. for them. Yeah, it moves them to four and two in the league. That's their best uh, start in the league since I think what thirteen fourteen. Mm -hmm. So uh, four and two, first road win of the year. They did lose on uh, Thursday to Belmont uh, in a game that was not very close. <laughs> uh, they went uh, uh, Belmont went up, up went up, up on them pretty early, real quick, and. Uh, Ended up being uh, pretty much a blowout there, so we'll just forget about that one. But uh, huge, but a huge, <laughs> huge win uh, over Tennessee State, who had not lost at home all year. They were, right, yeah, yeah, I think it was seven straight they had won. Yeah, so they they uh, they were definitely uh, uh, that was definitely a big win for the program, and everybody stepped forward. And you could tell by the reaction, and everything, and the way the the, you know, the kids afterwards listening to them and the interviews and the post game stuff, they realized how important it was. Right. And, uh, because you know if you, you can't win on the road in this league, you're not gonna you're not gonna get very far. Yes. So. Very much a, a huge uh, thing, and uh, uh, Jamar also had 25 points in the Belmont game, mm -hmm. and because of those two big performances, he was the OVC Player of the Week for the second time this year, which is right. kind of uh, funny because he, he didn't even, he didn't even start the two games two weeks ago no. uh, over at McBrayer, but uh, uh, Hobbs got hurt, and yeah, like you, you wrote about it afterwards, you know, mm -hmm. Jamar had been a little bit of a slump. He went back mm -hmm. and worked on some of his shots, and uh, definitely helped to get him back on track. Yeah, I think that I think he's try, he's finding that balance of not doing too much and, and coming through and being able to turn it on when they need him to. Yeah, so. yeah, not trying to do too much. Right. <laughs> the EKU women are now eight and nine and uh, two and four in the league in eighth place, and they picked up a, a, a huge road win because that was their first OVC road victory uh, in seventeen games. They had lost seventeen straight on the on the road and. Uh, uh, it's been more than a year since they uh, won, won a conference game. Of course, Tennessee State is the bottom the bottom team in the league. They are uh, winless and 
But it still wasn't easy. No, no, it wasn't. <laughs> no, I, I mean, they beat them 61 to 55 and had four players in double figures. It took them all. Uh, Terry Goodlett had 15 points and five rebounds, and Samari Mowbray and Aliyah Green had 13 points each. And they had mm -hmm. uh, 22 points in the fourth quarter to yep. rally past them. So. Yeah, they were down for a lot of that game and had to come mm -hmm. back and, and win. So, but a uh, huge win. Of course, on Thursday, they also came up on the, on the very bad end of a loss to Belmont. That was 68 48. And, Goodlett and Quay Stanton both had 10 points in that game. So they, uh, they get that name right? Yeah. Okay, I'm bad, I'm bad, <laughs> with, I'm bad with some of, the, some of these names. <laughs> you cover, you, that's your team. You cover yeah. them. So you, you, know the, you know these young ladies. I don't know them very well. Well, congrats so, to both of them. Good job. Yeah, it was, a good, it was a good Saturday for the Colonels, and they are back out on the road again this week. Thursday, uh, to today, they were at uh, Jacksonville State, which, of course, uh, the men, actually, well, I guess they swept both the men and women over here at Alumni mm -hmm. a couple weeks ago. And then on Saturday they'll be at Tennessee Tech. So two more big, two more big wins. Like I said, the men are sitting there tied for fourth place. Yeah, uh, there are two, keep it going. two undefeated teams, and uh, Murray and P are six and zero, oh, and then Belmont is, I think, five and one, and then uh, Tennessee State and Eastern are four and two. So they're all right there with a long way to go. Like we always say, eighteen game conference schedules. <laughs> a long, long way to go. Down in Berea, uh, like we say every week, the Lady Mountaineers just keep on rolling. It's uh, eleven straight wins now for the Berea College women's basketball team. They are now 16 and 2, 9 and 0 in the USA South Conference. Uh, they're in first place in the Western Division, and on Saturday they will play Agnes Scott over at the Seabury Center, and that is the only other undefeated team in the league. They are the, the leaders in the Eastern Division, and of course that's significant because the team with the best overall record hosts the USA USA South Conference tournament next month. So uh, I went over Agnes Scott, put them in beautiful position to to host that tournament, and. Uh, that would be kind of cool to have that right in Berea. It's only the third year they've been in that league, and they've never hosted a, a game, so that would be that would be very cool. Yeah, let's make everybody come up north. <laughs> yeah, we are the most northern <laughs> team in that league by about 200 miles. <laughs> but they did. They got two more wins on the road last week. Saturday they beat Brevard 64-53, and then on Saturday, just uh, or Tuesday, just rolled past Covenant College at 158. Against Brevard, Aaliyah Hampton, the fabulous freshman, she had 20 points, and... Bailey Vanover uh, had 13 points, and against uh, Covenant, uh, Destiny Combs had 21 points. Uh, Leah Hampton had 18, and Leah Parker had 18 points off the bench. So, like I said, Saturday they are at home against Agnes Scott, uh, who is 7 and 0. So that's the two last two undefeated teams in the USA South. Yeah, it's so, a big game. Big game down there. The men split a pair of games this week. They were also on the road. They are now 8 and 7, 4 and 4 in the USA South, and they are in uh, third place in the Western Division. And uh, Saturday they went down to Lagrange in Georgia and won 92-76. The so then uh, they lost to Huntington on Sunday in 87-73. Against Lagrange, uh, Isaac Hall had 25 points and nine rebounds, and Terrell Carter had 23 points. And on Sunday we had uh, Quay Charlton, Madison Central grad Quay Charlton, with 28 points. He hit four threes. He was 10 to 15 from the free throw line, and he was the USA South newcomer of the week. So. Just so good to see our, our <laughs> Madison County grads. So yeah, well. yeah, and it's great because he he didn't play. He couldn't play in the first semester mm -hmm. because there was a, a, a academic issue, mm -hmm. uh, something with his transcripts and all that type of stuff. So he hasn't been able to play until they came back in January. But he's uh, he's been lighting it up for him ever since. And uh, they will also uh, they were at home on Wednesday. They were on the road Wednesday at Maryville as we were taping this and then on Saturday they were at home against Piedmont. So there's a double, double header down there on Saturday if you want to go watch some good basketball. The men have Piedmont and the women have Agnes Scott. So good basketball down there. It's always a fun environment down there and it's a, it's a cheap ticket. If you want to go yeah. watch some good basketball, go check it out. Lots of local kids on all those teams too. Even yeah. the other day Adriana Beggs, uh, a Bria college graduate or Bria community graduate from last year, she scored against uh, and there went over Covenant. So oh, great. lots of local kids all over the place. Switching over to high school basketball, uh, on the boys' side, the Madison Central Indians picked up a couple of wins last week, and they're they're starting to come together. They've won four of their last six now. They've um, at times this year they've struggled to kind of find some other people besides yeah. Cole Brown and Brighton <laughs> Ray to put up points, but they're finally starting to kind of get it together and uh, get on track. And um, Saturday night I was over there when they beat Great Crossing 54-50 in kind of a, uh, a low scoring kind of grinded out type of game and then uh, on Tuesday night they beat West Jesmond 74-67. Against Great Crossing, Braden Ray had 17 points, Cole Brown had 14 points, and uh, Trey Skaggs had 12 points. And then on, uh, against West Jesmond, uh, Cole Brown had 21, but it was it was the freshman, the, the little scrawny 138 pound freshman <laughs> as Coach Feldhouse would say. Would say. Jalen Davis had 28 points, hit six threes, a career high for him on the night, and uh, Braden Ray had 16 points as well. And they'll be back in action Saturday at Lincoln County. So it looks like they're, not surprisingly, a Coach Allen Feldhouse 
team is, is getting it together at the right time and, and, and they usually maximizes the most of the potential from of his guys so they're they're trending in the right direction uh, you got the chance to see Madison Southern last week. You mm -hmm. saw them Friday night. Uh, they, they picked up a win over Garrett County. Yes, and then, they did. Uh, unfortunately, went on the road and lost two after that. But talk about the, the win over Garrett County Friday night. Uh, it, was a, it was a great game. Uh, I mean, again, the defense uh, won them that game. They were able to really, uh, you know, have a kind of a balanced attack. And when it came down to it, I mean, they were able to, you know, force some turnovers when they needed to and, and make it up at the free throw line. Um, and they beat Gary County 80 to 59 on Friday. So, yep. Yeah, they went on on Saturday, they went on the road down to uh, an event down in Somerset and lost to a really good Logan yeah. County team, 65 58, a team that had beaten Central uh, a couple weeks ago. And then on Tuesday night, they went over to Montgomery County and lost 73 66. So, uh, they are 9 and 9. They have lost a couple in a row and they'll try to break that uh, skid on Monday night when they host Boyle County. But of course, we be remiss if we didn't uh, mention Friday night in addition yeah. to the win over Garrett County. A very uh, special night. Yeah, senior Chad Fuga got his thousandth point uh, early in the early in the second half. Off of half. three, no surprise. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, he had 26 points in that game, and Nate Turner had 14 as well, and then he lit it up in the other two games too against Logan mm -hmm. County. Uh, Chad Fuga had uh, 19, and uh, Nate Turner had 17, and then uh, on Mon against Montgomery County the other night, he had 30. Uh, Chad Fuga had 30, hit six more threes, and Hunter Buchanan had 12 points as well. Uh, see, on the year, Chad's averaging 20 points a game. He's hit 49 threes. He's shooting 82% from the free throw line. Mm -hmm. So that young man is having a tremendous senior season, uh, really stepping it up uh, in the place of Trent Moberly not being in the lineup yeah. and really leading that team. So they're 9-9 nine and, nine and uh, heading into uh, like a little bit of a break before their next mm -hmm. game there. So that's a good chance to kind of recoup. Recovery, they had, yeah. some, had a lot of games there in a short period of time. <laughs> so the Berea community uh uh, Pirates. They played uh, a couple games last week as well. They picked up a win on Friday over Evangel Christian at home, 66-37. And then you were there on Tuesday when they beat Jackson County 63-55 at home. That was a battle. Uh, yeah, it was. They were down uh, three players and have three players in the lineup and were kind of having to push guys in. They usually play ten players and, and instead they had to play seven. But, I mean, they all stepped up. I mean, they did a great job. Uh, Jackson County had a chance to kind of take over and two runs kind of in the second half and they just beat them back and and won 63 to 55 um on tuesday so yeah and, and again at the free throw line <laughs> yeah, yeah timmy thompson had 16 points and uh, Jaden smith had 12 points and we this week we have seen the return of a familiar face to that yeah. team jared whitaker has rejoined the team and oh he, he did great he had 10 points against uh, jackson county and he obviously adds another dimension to that team he's a very athletic kid mm -hmm. Uh, so that uh, definitely bodes well for them heading into district tournament time as well. But And the win over um, Evangel Christian, uh, Jalen Dorsey had 20 points, Quentin Morgan had 13 points, and uh, Jaden Smith had 11 points. So they are going to be home Friday night against Danville Christian and doubleheader over there with the girls. And then uh, Saturday they're at Frankfurt Christian. So we got Danville Christian and Frankfurt Christian. Back to <laughs> <laughs> so they are now 12-5 and five on the year. They've won a couple in a row. So uh, things trending well for them as yeah, well. Is, but yeah. They lost in the first round of the All-A Regional and they've won two games since. So they've bounced back very nicely from from that disappointing loss over there. So, And the Model, Model Lab uh, Patriots, uh, they're now 4-12 and 12 on the season. They've lost four straight. Only played one game last week because they also lost in the first round of the 11th Regional All-A. So the only one game on the schedule and that was on Tuesday. They went over to Western Hills and Bruce Pingleton had 20 points but they ended up uh, suffering a 48-47 uh, loss to Western Hills over in Frankfurt. Ethan Bailey had nine points as well, and they will be back in action Thursday at Bourbon County. So we switch over to the girls' side, and uh, obviously we're going to have uh, our guests in here in a minute from the Bree Community Girls, but we'll kind of re re real quickly kind of recap their, their week. Uh, they had uh, uh, suffered a couple of losses heading into the All-A tournament and then uh, went up to Lexington and really ground out three tough wins over uh, Sayer, uh, Frankfurt, and LCA. None of those were easy at all. And uh, that uh, earned them a second straight trip back to the state tournament uh, over here at McBrayer Arena. And uh, like I said, unfortunately, they did lose to an unbelievably talented Bethlehem team. Mm -hmm. And we'll talk a little bit more about that with Coach here in a minute. But uh, that was a 64-13 loss in the first round of the state tournament over there. But a uh, tremendous run. I don't think it takes anything away from what they accomplished. Uh, it was just uh, from what they basically don't have one, one or two starters back, if you want to look okay. at it that way, from last year. You're starting point guards out with a, missing the whole season. With yeah, that's an a remarkable story. I mean, just the grit and determination to you know go back and get back to back wins like that. Yeah, yeah, it, it was. I, you know, I, I, I was surprised they got past Sayer in the first <laughs> round of the region. I mean, that was that was a tight game right there. But uh, yeah, they showed a lot of grit and and heart. And uh, like I said, we're very happy to have a couple a couple of those kids here in a minute to talk about all that. But 
in addition to winning those three games, then Monday night before they went over to the LA, they went and uh, they picked up a 67 or 47 45 win over East Jesmond in overtime. They were down 13 mm-hmm. 1 in the first quarter of that game and uh, ended up coming back and winning that thing in overtime. They got back, uh, Alexis Howe or Alexis Newman came back for that game after missing all the LA games. And so they. They sit at 11 and 9 now, and they will be back in action Friday at home against Henry Clay. Like I said, in doubleheader with the boys over there. So you'll have uh, the girls versus Henry Clay, and then mm-hmm. the, the, the boys versus uh, Danville Christian. So a doubleheader over there Friday night. Now, Mass and Southern girls, uh, they have lost. Uh, well, they, they they won. They picked up the big rivalry yeah. win over Central last Thursday, and then they've lost two straight. But uh, you were there last Thursday. What do you what, was do, you, a, what do you expect? It's it was a, a district Central game. Southern game. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, it was it was hard fought, scrappy. I mean, it was back and forth the the entire game until the very end uh, when when Southern was able to get some some clutch shots and um, <laughs> it was little Morgan Flannery was able to <laughs> to get this three and and mm-hmm. and get them in a good position and and they beat them forty five to forty three. So and they were very excited about that. Um, yeah. <laughs> Those so. games are always incredibly intense. They they just. It doesn't matter. Regular yeah, Allie season. Charlie now is like two and zero in the district <laughs> as a first year coach. He, yeah, he was really thrilled too. <laughs> <laughs> and somewhere, summer, summer is smiling somewhere too. Summer right. Simmons is smiling somewhere too. <laughs> so, but uh, after that, though, unfortunately for them, they went on the road Saturday and uh, lost to Electric County Central seventy four fifty eight, and then they lost on Tuesday to North Floral uh, sixty nine sixty in the in the win over uh, Madison Central. They had three kids with ten points: right. uh, Skylar Sparks, Macy Daniels, and Sam Cornelson all had ten points. And Macy Daniels had eight rebounds in that mm-hmm. game. And the loss to Electric County Central, Cornelson had 18 points, and Sonny Walters had 11. And uh, on Tuesday against North Floral, uh, Sam had 18 points, and Aaliyah Richardson had 13 points. And they'll be back down, to be making that trip back down 75 again uh, Friday night to go to South Floral. So they went to North Floral Tuesday, South Floral on Friday. What a tremendous year, Samantha Cornelson's having. Yes, yeah, she uh, is. Uh, I mean, she, she's just a clutch shooter. Yeah, yeah. Ice in her veins. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, and Madison Central girls, they uh, obviously, like you said, they, they come up just a little bit short, uh, right. 45-43 on Thursday night over there in Berea against Madison Southern. And after that, uh, uh, weren't able to bounce back. They went over to Clay County on Saturday and suffered a 55-42 loss down there. Brianna Beerbaum had 13 points, and Ja'Kari McKeithen had 12 points and 13 rebounds. Um, well, those were the... No, was really the scores against uh, Southern. Southern, yes. Yeah, Bre- Brea had 13... Brea, Brianna Beerbaum had 13 <laughs> points against Central. And then McKeithen had 12 points and uh, 13 rebounds. 13 rebounds against Central, and then against against uh, Southern. <laughs> yes, then against uh, Clay County, Clea Todd had 19 points, and McKeithen had 12 points and 12 rebounds. They'll be back. They were back in action Wednesday night against uh, Paris, and then Friday night they'll be at home against Lafayette. So, and uh, the Model Lady Patriots were the hottest team in the county, but they've kind of cooled off a little bit. I guess that just happens at some point. It's the long, it's a long, the season. The long right? season. Yeah. <laughs> so. They've lost two of their past three. They're now 13-4 and in the season. Uh, obviously, they went out early in the LA uh, Classic. They lost in the first round of the 11th region LA to uh, LCA. And then they went over to Washington County, picked up a game with Washington County on Friday night and picked up a 52-36 uh, win on that night. But then, uh, kind of shockingly, they went uh, Tuesday over to Danville Christian and lost 47-39 uh, in a game that uh, uh, Coach Wells was... <laughs> Very disappointed with that performance. She, you know, she basically, you know, she texted me and said, "Man, we just didn't show up." So, mm. but you know, hey, it's a long season, yeah, a lot of games. So they're gonna, unfortunately you're going to have a few of those thrown in there uh, at some point. Against Washington County, though, Taylor Compton had 15 points, uh, Keaton Hall had 14 points, and Kenzie Ferguson had 10 points. And then against uh, Danville Christian, uh, Kenzie Ferguson had 11 points, McKenna Tuttle had 10 points, Summer Ray had 10 points, and I was shocking to see that Taylor Comp didn't score in that game, which I guess is probably a big reason why they. Ended up losing, but I, uh, uh, Coach Wells said they had a six-four post player. Oh yeah, and so that kind of, <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. So they will be back in action tonight, uh, Thursday, over at Robertson County, and then they're at home Saturday versus Valley. So in addition to all that, we do have some other sports we're going to throw in there a little bit. We didn't have any swimming this week; there were no swimming uh, swimming meets, but we did have uh, uh, the Madison Central wrestlers did go over to the Section Three large school state duels. And they did uh, finish second. They got all the way to the final and ended up losing to Johnson Central, the host school. And so they do advance to the state tournament, uh, the state small and state large school duels uh, this weekend at Lindsey Wilson. And they had senior night on Wednesday night as well. And uh, we were over there as well. So check our social media. I'm sure we'll have lots of pictures and stuff from that as well. So uh, lots of action. Uh, the LA is still going on. If you all if you want to go over there, I know uh, the, obviously uh, you know, our young ladies, unfortunately, are, are not in there anymore. But 
tournament does run through Sunday over McBrayer. It's lots of good uh, competition, lots of good games. Uh, uh, Friday, you have the, the quarterfinals of both. The girls are in the morning, the boys are in the afternoon, and then the semifinals are Saturday and the finals are on Sunday. So lots of good action over there if you want to go check it out. Or if not, we got we got action here in town as well. So if you want to come check out one of the games. We always encourage you to come out. I know there, yes. I know there are some, you can catch some of these games on the internet feeds and, you know, bad one camera angle <laughs> video, but come out and support the kids. It's nothing like know? being there. Yeah. Yeah. And especially, you know, some of it's on the radio too, but just come out and support the kids. It's a lot of fun and it's cheap. Five, six bucks. Just come out and come out and support the kids and have a good time. These kids are working hard and they, that's why we... It really uh, makes a difference too when the crowd's into it. I mean, you can change a game just by being there. Yeah. Yeah. Bray had a big crowd over mm -hmm. Wednesday over at McBray Arena. Unfortunately, they didn't have much to cheer about because uh, they got down pretty quickly right off the bat, but uh, they did bring a large contingent of, of kids, and and we've seen great student sections all year and everything. Oh so, yeah. So, but uh, our guests are waiting for us to to bring them <laughs> on. So, and you've got to go run over to wrestling. So yes. we got we got things to do. So that's our quick little recap of the week. And as always, check us out on uh, Twitter, Richmond R Sports, and Facebook. Register Sports. And, uh, <laughs> RichmondRegister.com, and we're we're all over the place and uh, we're trying to keep you updated as much as we can. So even when we're out of town or not around, we're, we're still hitting the Twitter and everything else trying to keep everybody updated. And once again, thanks to the coaches for always being so helpful and getting information to us. So well, we will be right back with Bria Community Girls Basketball Coach Damian Stepp. The Richmond Register Sports Show is brought to you by Nuevo Vallarta, a neighborhood restaurant with indoor and patio seating, a family-friendly environment, and quality, authentic Mexican food at reasonable prices. Nuevo Vallarta. Yeah. Oh, welcome back. We're here with Brick Community uh, Girls Basketball Coach Damian Stepp. Thank you so much, Coach, for being on. Yeah, appreciate you having us. Really I, know, do. I know it's uh, kind of a difficult to come over here, uh, you guys, after, after the loss, but I don't think it takes away from what uh, what these girls accomplished over the last week or so. I know it uh, stings to, to lose in the first round of the state tournament, but getting there is a is a huge accomplishment for the second straight year. Yeah, I mean, you know, certainly um, certainly getting knocked out in the first round and, and, and then kind of in the fashion that we did, uh, you know, we, we got Wallet pretty good today. It was... Uh, you know, it was kind of one of those games that 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 really gets over before you start. Uh, you know, we we had a we had a game plan. We we kind of come in with with the mindset of of making sure that we just kind of contain a little bit. And you know, obviously we knew they were gonna they were gonna come after us with a lot of pressure. Uh, try to capitalize, I think, on on some inexperience and 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 really on some younger guard play and. Uh, you know, obviously they're they're playing one out, and it usually happens with a uh, with a more experienced team. You know, a team that's a uh, a team that's kind of been there and 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 been at it for a while. You know, they're uh, uh, you know, and I told pretty much anybody, I told you even before the game that <laughs> okay. that you know we uh, we we kind of taken this approach through the through the uh, the regional tournament that you know nothing easy. You know, that was kind of our our motto is you know, we don't want anything easy. We don't want to make anything easy for your opponent. We we, you know, we want you to go out and, and challenge them. You know, challenge them every, you know, every play, every possession, um, <coughs> and then you know that that nothing easy certainly came back on us in the first <laughs> round of the state tournament there because uh, you know certainly did not get the draw that would have been conducive to to, to maybe being able to, to go out there and be extremely, <coughs> excuse me, extremely competitive. So. Yeah. You know the, I guess the upside of that is, is uh, you know we had a lot of young kids that uh, they got a lot of experience in in, in that game. We played everybody, uh, you know that that venue, uh, uh, McBrayer's a a venue that we see in the district tournament, and you know to be able to get on the court there in the in the state tournament kind of gives you a, a an advantage, I think. You know at least going into the district play as well. So uh, not a t not all not a total loss. I mean you know certainly some good things come out of that. You know the experience today. Yeah, yeah. That Bethlehem team is nineteen and two, and they they have a very good chance to get to Rupp Arena. I mean they are a very good team. I guess E Town is probably their be their biggest rival in the fifth the fifth region right now, but. They could very well be could be over there in Sweet Sixteen. Yeah, I mean, I think E Town's still the favorite there, but they're kind of you know he, uh, neck and neck. Uh, uh, you know, a lot of people don't realize that last year Bethlehem was in the All A State Tournament, made a really good showing. Mm -hmm. uh, Bethlehem also won that region, Region Five last year. Um, 
got beat by Owensboro Catholic, who was the uh, All A state champ last year. Got beat by Owensboro Catholic in the state tournament. I uh, think that they they were something like twenty nine and five last season with everybody coming back. Yeah. So so the team that we played today <coughs> was you know twenty nine and five. Won the All A region uh, in Region Five. Won the All Class region in Region Five last year, and pretty much had you know everybody back. So yeah, I, <laughs> it, it's a it, it's a really even looking at the quality of of teams in the tournament, which there are a lot of good teams there. Uh, I, I certainly think that they had to be coming in, uh, you know, at least a, a, you know the favorite, if not favorite, you know, top. You know, a couple teams expected certainly to be in the finals and, and win the thing. So. Yeah, I mean, that just shows you the kind of teams that are over here at McBrayer. I mean, it's, it's this is the small school state tournament, quote unquote. But man, these are you're going to see teams here that are going to be at Rupp Arena. Yeah, no, I mean, absolutely. You know, like I say, they were there. Um, you know, I went down the list. There's several teams that 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 made it to made it to uh, McBrayer last year in the All A that that were also. Um, you know, at, at Rupp in, in the state tournament, and, and and you know that it, it also goes to show that the All A tournament is you know it, it's by no stretch uh, is it you know um, kind of a it's about it's about little schools, but it's not a, a little you know deal. It's a big deal. You know, it's a really big deal to get there. Uh, certainly, an even bigger deal to play well and and, and perform and. You know, um, there's as much energy and excitement uh, for those games, and as much energy and excitement, uh, uh, you know, for that for that All A State Championship on Sunday. You'll see uh, uh, as much energy and excitement there as there is at Rupp Arena playing for a All Class, you know, state championship. It's a, it's a, it, it's a truly unique and uh, uh, awesome event that they have that uh, that now has kind of taken you know a life of its own. You know, especially for the small schools who. Who frequently, you know, do do not fare well, um, you know, when when you're competing against five, six, eight class schools. So. Yeah, this a team like a team like you when you're in a district with a, a five A school and a six A school. It's yeah, that's right. <laughs> you know, we, uh, uh, you know, we like to think that we, you know, we can consistently go out there and be competitive in, you know, in the district, and 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 certainly, you know, we have we have even more. I, I, every Every public school, I think, if I'm not mistaken, every public school in Fayette County is like a 6A school. I think they're all like, you know, you get Henry Clay and, and Tate's Creek, and um, it, you've got uh, Lafayette, Lafayette, and you've yeah, got, yeah. You, you know, uh, Douglas. Uh, all of those schools are like huge. I mean, they're just really huge schools. Yeah. Uh, so, I mean, kind of when you start looking at playing within the region, something we've, we've really done more of this year, our schedule has, has included a whole lot more 11th region schools. You start looking at your region. You look at the the size of the schools that you're competing with, you know, on a on a, a nightly basis. Uh, you know, it certainly gives you a uh, it, it gives you a, a, a I feel like it gives you an advantage. You know, if you can play those 11th region schools, it gives you an advantage when it comes to Class A um, play. But uh, yeah. you know, the, and then there's different Class A's, and I, and I think a lot of people don't realize that that, that the Class A's tournament and the class a schools that you get you also get a lot of private schools mm -hmm. and a lot of those private schools are uh they just you know it's a different you know it's a different uh, uh makeup of students and student athletes then you had to be two, you had to be two of those to get back over here say say you're an lca well that's right yeah. you know uh and and you know at, that that was it we play frankfurt uh you know model i guess is kind of semi-private you know public but uh you know play we play frankfurt you know, in Class A, but you know, otherwise, you know, you got Sayer, you got LCA, um, and you know, you got Frankfurt Christian at, at some point, which will you know continue to grow as well. So, mm -hmm. um, and it's it it is an accomplishment, and 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 I, I you know, we we live um, you know twelve miles, twelve miles, ten miles, twelve miles down the road uh, when this tournament rolls around. Um, you know, we do the same as the other teams. We come up, we we lodge, we stay, um, we take the kids to watch the games. We we, we want to give them that full experience that uh, that any team who has um, made their way to a state tournament, uh, made their found their way in a state tournament, uh, gets gets uh, to to experience. And uh, and like I say, it's just a, it's a great event. Like I say, for the small schools, uh, something that they can. Uh, Something that they can play for. So, yeah. now you're talking about the experience of that Bethlehem team, and I, I came back here after the game, and I was writing that story up, and 
your starting lineup is four sophomores and a freshman. <laughs> so I mean, obviously the uh, you, you got a lot of young kids out there, and you got one senior on the on the team, uh, you know, kind of a reserve player, Maddie Cummins. Yeah. But uh, yeah, this is you know you're going to have the same team back for a couple more years. Well, you know, in the Bethlehem game was was even going into that Bethlehem game, I, I you know we look at that and we say that they are kind of what we want to be, uh, and they're not all seniors, but they're certainly upper class. Uh, uh, experienced kids and and that's kind of what we want to be and I think that we we have the parts and pieces to get there we we've got a lot of <coughs> excuse me, we got a lot of work you know to get done uh, in, in order to get to that point you know before these kids move on you know junior senior year but but yeah you know and and even with that I think the you know what what got us through the regional uh, Class A tournament it was was not just those sophomores. Um, you know we had we had some injuries and, and guys out. Um, you know, um, Matty King, uh, a freshman, freshman who's who's now become kind of a, a part time starter. Um, you know, she's definitely a finisher. Mm -hmm. So you know, sometimes we talk about starters. We talk about you know, it's not as much important who starts, but who finishes. And I mean, she has down the stretch been one of those kids that's been a go to kid and. Uh, um, I couldn't say I couldn't say enough about uh, what she's brought to the table. Um, you know, <coughs> Abby Beard, another freshman, uh, Sophie Brewer, an eighth grader, Lauren Stepp, an eighth grader. You know, these are kids that that you see a lot of JV minutes, but you know they're also logging some minutes uh, um, in the varsity play. So, okay. you know, but our sophomore class, I, and, I, and 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 you mentioned what we do have playing. <coughs> sorry, a little under the weather here. <laughs> Maybe a little bit yelling on the sidelines <laughs> and stuff too, but uh, our sophomore class, you know, Maddie, uh, pretty pretty well documented. That, you know, Maddie's been a uh, Maddie Steph been a, a a starter for three years, and you know, we we lost her um, with a, a knee injury this year, and you know, Madison Howe and Mackenzie Howe and Isis Rogers, Alexis Newman, you know, so our sophomore class is kind of I think where the core um, experience right now lies. Um, so we know that you know we've got those guys coming for another two years, uh, you know, and and in Maddie's absence, uh, you know, Isis Rogers has been incredible. I, I can't say enough about how she stepped up. Isis is not a, a big kid, uh, but she's kind of always been in that two guard spot. She's done some fill in minutes as a as a point guard, uh, but uh, <coughs> you know, due to the injury, she's kind of fell in that that kind of fell in her lap this year uh and she's had some really big moments uh you know she was all tournament team in the in the regional all tournament or in the regional uh class a tournament uh she she had a she had after the tournament we went and played east jasmine the other night mm -hmm. had a had a big game hit a game winner uh at the buzzer uh against east jasmine um you know handling ball really well uh kind of running things and 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 you know it's really a challenge for a kid who's not been in that role as a sophomore to kind of step in and 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 really take the reins on a basketball team mm -hmm. um you know and, and and i can't say enough about her and then you know mackenzie how um she's the kind of the kid that I, I felt like was going to be an impact player this year uh but was kind of in the shadow waiting for adrian beggs to graduate last season and uh yeah so mckenzie has has stepped up <coughs> pretty big and has 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 really kind of assumed that role of uh of, of of being that post presence uh i you know she's still coming along <coughs> offensively but defensively statistically if you look i mean defensively she has just done an incredible job uh she limited uh you know the the post from frankfurt who's a who's a really solid player she held her um, you know, she did a great job against uh, uh, Allie Richardson earlier in the in the Southern game. Um, she she did a really really good job uh, in the in the regional in the regional championship uh, uh, with with uh, we kind of traded around with both of the post players at uh, Lexington Christian. So she she gets statistically sometimes it gets overlooked a little bit but i mean she does a lot of the things that 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 don't i mean you know boxing if, if there was a staff for boxing out and taking care of your man i mean obviously rebounds get tabulated but you don't see how many times a, a key rebounder is kept off the boards while somebody else comes in and 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 swoops up swoops in and grabs a rebound um you know and and, and kenzie is a 
kids is just that kid. So, I, you know, uh, Alexis Newman, you know, shot the ball extremely well at times this season. She's dealt with a little bit of an ankle. Mobility right now is a little, you know, still up and down. But, um, you know, she's she's been a couple two-year starter. Uh, it's a it's a it's a really good position to be in. I think with that sophomore class uh, kind of leading the way. Um, but we've got you know freshmen like I say Maddie and Abby and and Chesney, you know, kind of nipping at <coughs> nipping at the heels of those guys too. So I would say that competition within your team is a good thing, and um, you know we've we've certainly got that. You know, with the freshmen kind of pushing the the sophomores, and then I've got a I, I honestly feel like we've got an eighth grade class that might be the best class that that we've had here kind of coming, uh, and and that eighth grade class is. You know, see them a whole lot right now because of the freshmen and sophomores. But but I certainly think that they're gonna they're gonna factor in and 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 definitely make things really interesting. Not just you know in the area or in the district, but they'll make things really interesting in practice. I mean, like it's going to you know moving forward. Um, you know, even this last third of season, but certainly on into next year, uh, it's going to get it's going to get pretty pretty competitive in practice every day. And and I think what that brings is just. Uh, uh, more and more improvement program wide. So, yeah. well, looking forward. I mean, uh, you guys have not won a district since 2003. I was talking to Jerry Bingham about that earlier today because he was he was the coach <laughs> of that of that team. Who's now your athletic director down there at Berea. But uh, you got to think uh, maybe all four teams in this district have a chance to girls teams have a chance to win it. I mean, uh, it, it's it's really <laughs> up in the air. I mean, the, you guys played Southern the other day. It was a two point game. Uh, I mean, it really could be up in the air for anybody. Yeah, I mean, I, I I've said it several times. You know, going in, everybody kind of thinks it's a a one horse race, and I and I, you know, you have to give the nod to Southern right now. Uh, their their schedule has been really next to none in the eleventh region. I mean, they've played a really tough schedule and, and fared really well. Um, my hats off to Coach Turley. He's he's done a great job of picking up where Coach Simmons has kind of left off with her district title last year, but. But that being said, you know when when you get you get in that district play and, and and we've seen it regular season when you get in the district play, you can throw a lot of that stuff out the window as far as expectations of of who the you know who the stronger team is because there's just so much emotion riding uh, in those games. There's a you know there's the the, the 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 basket the rim tends to get a little bit smaller in those games and uh, you know free throws don't don't seem to go as well. I mean we've been the the, the victim of that a few times. They don't go as well as they <laughs> as they sometimes do and. And you know, I guess we. I think we played. It was like a four point. They they, they got us by four. I think the turnaround. They got Central by two. Mm. Uh, model for whatever reason. <coughs> They're not playing. I don't think either of them. But they are. I mean, we do play model. So I mean, we'll have kind of a a gauge, kind of where we are with model here in another you know, couple weeks. I mean, we play. Uh, I think we're at model this year. So. Mm. Yeah, it's uh, it's definitely interesting, and I think in the four years that I've been here, it's probably the the most legitimate, you know, up for grabs district that that I've seen um, on the girls' side. You yeah, know, for I mean, sure. Even a central team that only has six wins has still has two of the best players in the district, and so they they could win it, you could win yeah. it. Uh, yeah. You know, model could win it. Uh, Southern obviously could repeat again. So it's it's going to be a lot of fun over there at McBrayer next month. Yeah, no doubt. I mean, you know, we we were able to get Central early. I think while they're they they're playing some young guys as well. Um, I I think uh, uh, Todd is is today is recovering from some some. Shoulder. She's actually dealing with some ongoing mm -hmm. shoulder stuff. But uh, you sure couldn't have told it when when she played us and. Uh, <laughs> Uh, McKeith and like I've told anybody, they've got two players that start for anybody in the district right now, mm -hmm. uh, and so anybody who wants to to say that, well, the, you know, Central or Southern and, and Berea, you know, kind of got their the, they're kidding themselves because, like I said, the, they've got two that probably start for for any of us, and mm -hmm. and and then, you know, the uh, this 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 group of young kids that Central has really good too. They they shoot the ball well, they play hard, they. They, you know, they they they're obviously, um, you know, they've done well in their you know their middle school play coming up the coming up the ranks there. So, you know, they, the, you know, eighth graders turn into ninth graders around tournament time, and 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 ninth graders turn into to freshmen, and so, I mean, into sophomores, and so you know, it's a, <coughs> it's 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 a, a matter of 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 who who kind of shows up and how they handle that pressure and and what, and I mean, certainly, I think that. Uh, 
I think Southern has to, to kind of be, you know, the, the front runner right now. But, you know, I, don't, I just don't think that it's so far out in front that, that everybody else needs to, to cross their fingers and hope for a, you know, hope for a different draw or whatever. Uh, just, just kind of take, uh, take what you get and, and, and figure out how to go out there and get a win. Yeah. Well, Coach, I appreciate you coming over here. I know it's just a couple hours after you guys lost. I know it's uh, got to be kind of stinging to, uh, <coughs> to, to to lose like that in the first round of the tournament, and, and especially the, as lopsided as the score was. But uh, it doesn't take away from what you kids have what the kids have accomplished and the journey to getting back over here again. So uh, it doesn't doesn't take away from that at all. And they they obviously deserve all the praise they're getting, and uh, hopefully they'll be back for two or three more years over there. Yeah, I, I appreciate you having us, and uh, like I said, it means, a, it means a lot to us to, to kind of be at least in those discussions, you know. I, I, when when it came in and, and kind of took over, that was that kind of wasn't the case. I mean, we, you know, we, we inherited kind of what we inherited, and, 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 you know, the young kids kind of bought in and have, have have done the work to to at least you know have earned the the opportunity to be to be in that discussion and uh, you know to you know to to kind of now see that come to fruition a little bit where these uh, where these uh, these kids are starting to 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 be in that discussion about man I you know you all got a real shot to win the district or mm -hmm. uh, you know you now you're a, you're a back to back uh, regional champ in, in class A ball and. Um, you know, to kind of see that happen and unfold is is really exciting, and and you know we're just gonna we're just gonna keep working at it, try to get better, and and like I say, we'll we'll play out the rest of the season, but start setting our sights on that district title and see what we can see what we can get. So yeah, yeah. appreciate it. Yeah, thank you so much for being on. I said it's going to be uh, I think it's going to be a heck of a district tournament over there uh, in Brayer next month, folks. So you won't want to miss it. I really I really feel that any of the four teams could win it, and. Uh, I guess it just uh, depends on who shows up that night. So it's going to be a lot of fun. But congratulations on all your success. Continue uh, best wishes to you and your team. And we'll be right back with Isis Rogers and Mackenzie Howe. Do you want to advertise on the Richmond Register Sports Show? Now you can. Contact us now at sports at richmondregister.com or message us on Facebook today. If it's sports in Madison County, we cover it. Advertise now on the Richmond Register Sports Show in Madison County. The Richmond Register Sports Show is brought to you by Nuevo Vallarta, a neighborhood restaurant with indoor and patio seating, a family-friendly environment, and quality, authentic Mexican food at reasonable prices. Nuevo Vallarta. Welcome back. We are here with Bria Community uh, Sophomores, Isis Rogers and Mackenzie Howell. Thank you so much for being here. Yeah. Appreciate you guys being here. I know it's obviously tough to come over here and talk about uh, the games right after you guys uh, lost earlier today, but we do appreciate you being here. And uh, obviously, uh, facing Bethlehem, you guys knew it was going to be a, a big challenge. That's a really good team, 19 and 2 on the season. Uh, kind of what did you guys, your expectations coming into it, Isis? Uh, I was just really nervous about turnovers, limiting those, getting the ball up the court. We watched a little bit of film, and they pressed really good. They have a lot of good players. So that was just my main concern. Kenzie, what was kind of the game plan coming in? Um, mainly the focus was to get past their zone. Like, we went over it in our practice, so I was more focused on that in our defense because they're really good so defense. Okay. Well, you guys, I mean, uh, you guys went up 2 nothing at least, so you got to go up to a good start, kind of what was the yeah. – they kind of turned around pretty quickly, but did you guys kind of feel pretty good at the beginning there? Uh, I mean, it kind of got us on a little bit of a roll, and then they started scoring more, and they were breaking our defense down. So, like – I was guarding a girl and she made a behind the back pass to someone, like just threw it behind her and they made a three and I was like, okay, <laughs> okay. Yeah. What was the feel there early, Mackenzie? Well, I was like, maybe we, like, we got this, we scored it, but then what, like I said, they started scoring a lot on us, so kind of broke down a little bit. Okay. For, for those kids maybe that go to Central or Southern or maybe up to the bigger schools, maybe to Estill or Rock Castle, the surrounding counties, Explain to everybody what, what this all-A tournament means to you guys. And not only to me, obviously to you and the, the kids from Model as well, but uh, what it means to you guys and what it's meant for you guys to get back there for a second straight year. Uh, it meant a lot. Like, there's a lot on us this year. We have a lot of injured players. So, like, just making it again, it just really meant a lot to, like, think that we're bigger than just, you know, a certain player and that we're just a really good team. And what does it mean to the whole school, McKenzie? Yeah, it's just really cool to like show our school that we still got it, even though we're like a small, like independent school. Like we we can do just as much as they can do, and it just feels really good to be able to have the opportunity. 
Okay. Yeah, flashback to last week. I mean, you guys were down two starters. You had some kids sick. Uh, you barely got past Sayer in the very first round. I mean, just kind of uh, look back on that week and what that week was like to win those three games over there in Lexington. Uh, Sayer, we were all really nervous. We were in the locker room, and I think it was like halftime. And, you know, we let our lead slip a couple times, and it was just nerve-wracking. And just to pull it out, and it gave us a little confidence to go and play Frankfurt, who we beat a lot by a lot more, and then to play LCA. And just to win that whole thing, we had like a pet bus and a couple kids were there cheering us on and stuff. So. Yeah, it was a huge crowd. Talk about the week over there. Yeah, it was so much fun. Like after we came through with that Frankfurt, Frankfurt win, we were so happy because last year, like we went into over, overtime. So it was, so we didn't know what was going to happen, but we did it. So we were all happy. We were like, we got this. We're going to get through. And it just felt good. Yeah, both you guys got a chance to play a little bit in that epic overtime game last, last year's 11th region final over yeah. there in that yeah. that old that old gym over there at Frankfurt High. <laughs> yeah. So it must have been pretty good to get another shot at them and uh, take them down again. Yeah. Okay. Well, obviously, you know, like we talked about Coach a minute ago, uh, flashing back to that game, that game to this game this year is obviously a, a totally different team. I mean, it's uh, obviously you graduated one kid, you had a kid transfer. Obviously, uh, you know, Maddie Steps been out with a with a knee. Uh, so, and then Chesney, uh, no, not Chesney, but Alexis was uh, was injured and couldn't play in the LA. So basically only had one starter back from, from last year. So it was a, mm -hmm. a totally different team out there than, than in the 2019 LA. Yeah. I talk about the difference. What you, you guys having to step up and, like today, yeah. today's starting lineup today was four sophomores and a freshman. Yeah. So. Um, it's just like a lot. I've had to step up and be a point guard, which I've never really had to do before. Uh, Kenzie's had to step up. She could tell you more about that for Adrian's spot. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because I didn't really play last year. Like, I played a little bit, but I knew I had to really step it up for this game because we all really wanted to, like, get through to Ole. So we all stepped it up equally, and I feel like we did a really good job becoming, like, as a team for it, and it was really cool. Yeah, I love, I love the, the little you know, motto you guys picked up, but nothing, nothing easy because it, it certainly wasn't easy up there, all, all three games. Yeah. <laughs> Having a short bench and all those things you went through, so... Uh, how did you guys kind of rally around that, that motto? Yeah, uh, Coach Step's kind of like our hype man. He'll either come <laughs> in the locker room screaming, yeah, and he'll be like, nothing easy, let's go. And we'll like, break it out, and he'll walk out all cool and stuff. And we have Alexis always break us out on, like, lady parts of nothing easy. And we just get really hyped, honestly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah obviously, that, but that motto must have spoke to you guys, obviously. Yeah. yeah. It, like, like, we will be playing, I think it was like LCA, we were playing them, and they were getting some really good shots up, like, mid-range, and I was like, come on, guys, nothing easy, like, let's pick up our defense, and it, like, helped us pull through a little bit. Yeah, yeah I mean, you, you mentioned that you've had to step into the point guard position, and uh, obviously that's the, the one of the toughest spots. You have to kind of run the team, yeah. and obviously you're, you know, you're... You're about four foot nothing. What are you? You're about I'm five two. Five two. <laughs> 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 but uh, you, you've done a great job stepping into that role. Kind of, what's it been like? Thank you. It's been really tough. Like this summer, Maddie hurt us off this summer, sadly. And I mean, that gave me about two months to really get it together before season started. Like I put in a lot of work this summer, so it's really hard to step up to be a leader on and off the court with my team. Uh, I have had to learn to see the court better get better handles, look to get other people open, stuff like that. Yeah. You did play last year. You even played in that 11th region championship game. You had a big basket yep. late in there. Maybe in the overtime, I think, you had a, you uh, had a big basket. Yeah. So you, you obviously had some varsity experience. Mm -hmm. You know, you weren't coming in totally unexperienced into the whole situation. Yeah. yeah. And like we said before, obviously, you're, Alexis, I mean, uh, Adrian Banks was kind of the, 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 the post last year, and you've been uh, asked to kind of step into that role. and. Uh, you had uh, four big, huge baskets in the LCA game, and you're, you're obviously becoming a, a threat in there. Talk about stepping into a bigger role. Yeah, it's kind of taken a lot for me because I used to not shoot the ball. But I was like, if we if we have a chance at this, I'm really going to have to step it up. I have to make baskets because we need this. Because like we couldn't shoot. They're like pretty good at defense, so we knew that we had to get it in and like get their big girls out. So I just try to step up and shoot the ball more. Yeah, well, I got to talk to you after the after the championship game. Yeah. These, these guys did such a great job driving, and a lot of times they drew the double team, and you're just standing there by yourself, and nice easy layup yeah. for you. You can't beat that. No. Yeah. <laughs> okay, well, you guys have obviously made some history here going back-to-back -back in the All-A, and uh, it has been uh, since 2003 since you guys have won the district. You guys probably weren't even born then, right? No, uh, I was born in 2004. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So obviously, after after obviously the disappointing loss today, that's I guess that's where the, the focus now shifts to. Is that kind of what you guys are 
the next goal? Yeah, before we came in here, I was talking to Coach Sepp, and I was like, I think we can win districts this year. Like, and if we don't win it this year, we'll get it next year, and just keep going from there. Yeah. Yeah. Is it maybe easier to, I mean, it was such a blowout today. Was it, is it maybe easier to move on? From that, or is it, is it harder when it's a, a buzzer beater loss, or is it you know is it just maybe easy to put this one behind you because it was so lopsided? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, they all hurt, obviously. Yeah, I'd rather they all get, suck, so. Yeah, I'd rather get beat by forty than one. Yeah, because like if you get beat by like one or two, like the the little things matter. So there's something you could have done that you didn't, and to get beat by forty, it's like it's heartbreaking, but it's a little bit better than one. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, we I mean, were just talking with Coach Stepin there. I mean, uh, I really this district this year is so competitive, and uh, I mean, I think it's not within you know it's, it's within the realm of possibility that all four teams could win could win the district. I mean, it's yeah. really competitive. What do you, how do you guys see the rest of the teams in the district? Well, <laughs> Southern and Central are actually pretty close because like Southern won by two points, obviously. Mm -hmm. So we're all pretty close around there. So I guess it's just whoever wants it more, really, just got to go for it, yeah. play your heart out. Yeah, it's going to be a fun three days at McBray Arena when that comes yeah. up next month. So. We appreciate you guys being here. I'm so I'm so sorry that uh, your run had to end like this, but the, yeah. the good thing is it's not over. You guys do yeah. have the district to look forward to, and uh, obviously you still have that big trophy to put uh, in your in your trophy case, and uh, you've accomplished a lot, and uh, we're, we're very happy that you guys were able to come on and we were able to celebrate your, your accomplishments. So okay. thank you guys very much for being here, and good luck to you the rest of the season. Thank, thank you. you. And that will wrap up this week's edition of the Richmond Register Sports Show. Thanks for watching. The Richmond Register Sports Show is brought to you by Nuevo Vallarta, a neighborhood restaurant with indoor and patio seating, a family-friendly environment, and quality, authentic Mexican food at reasonable prices. Nuevo Vallarta. Do you want to advertise on the Richmond Register Sports Show? Now you can. Contact us now at sports at richmondregister.com or message us on Facebook today. If it's sports in Madison County, we cover it. Advertise now on the Richmond Register Sports Show in Madison County. Almost two decades. That's right, I've covered local sports in Madison County for almost two decades. The Madison Central Indians, the Madison Southern Eagles, the Model Patriots, the Brea Pirates, the EKU Colonels, and the Brea College Mountaineers. I've covered them all. Football, basketball, baseball, softball, volleyball, track, cheerleading, golf, youth sports, and more. It's all being covered by the Richmond Register. Join us for a brand new weekly sports program. Watch the Richmond Register Sports Show every Thursday at 9 p.m. Be sure to like, share, and follow us on all our social networks and to subscribe to the Richmond Register online or get your own subscription delivered. If it's sports in Madison County, we cover it.